Hello, I'm back with continuation of chapter 19. So today we're going to talk about autoimmune diseases and then the allotransplantation. So let's start with autoimmune diseases. So what my message to you here is your B and T cells, this is you, you look pretty rear here in a kid's type of drawing. Um, and these are your B cells, right? So you have many different B cells, the same way that you have many different T cells. So these are the B cells and these are the T cells, right? And they're all inside your body circulating in your lymphoid vessels. What do I mean by different B cells? What's the difference in this case between this B cell and this B cell? What, why are they different? What makes them different is that they learned to react by producing antibody against one specific molecule. So let's say in the case of this B cell, this is the molecule, okay? That's all they know how to recognize. They don't recognize anything else. Let's say in the case of this other B cell, the antibody is against this other molecule, okay? And then if you wanna continue the, the game, this guy is going to recognize another molecule. And you're like, well, which molecules are this? Well, and T cells the same thing. They're gonna have TCR, and the TCR is going to be against um, specific molecules. One is gonna be the blue, the other is gonna be the red, and, the, and so on. Which molecules are this? So here is the thing. These molecules can be from your body. Let's say the blue is from your body, and then the green is also part of your liver, for example. But the red is not. The red is part of a foreign microbe. Let's say it's part of this protozoa. Okay, that molecule is part of this protozoa. What does that mean for this? So at some point, this protozoa infected your body, you had any contact with it, and you developed this B cell clone that makes this type of antibody against this antigen, right? What happens here? is that your body, as these B cells are developing, is supposed to do one thing. There is something expected from your immune system. Anything that is against the self molecules, the blue and the green, which are part of your body, these clones of B cells need to be depleted. What about T cells? Let's do the same thing for T cells. So we had the blue, we have another TCR that knows how to recognize the green, and another TCR that knows how to recognize the red. So remember the red is part of a protozoa. It's a molecule that came from this protozoa, and the T cell also met it, probably in the spleen, okay? against self, against self, should be depleted. Against protozoa, should be there, and you would have memory, B, and T cells, right? Against non-self. What's non-self here? What, what am I calling non-self? This guy, right here. If any foreign molecule. It could even not be a bug, it could be just like pollen or something in the dirt, or it could be a bug, right? So you're okay if you're just attacking something out of the body. And then if you really attack it hard and it's not a pathogen, then you have allergies, but that's a different story. Here, the message is, something happens and depends on genetic factors, some environmental factors, that in some people, these clones are not deleted, okay? you still have these molecules, let's draw them again, you still have these molecules, these antibodies, that attack the self. So this clone is still there, it doesn't die. This clone attacks the green molecule, it doesn't die. Same thing for the T. 
and when this happens what happens what is happening to your body is a loss of self tolerance you don't learn to tolerate your own molecules and you start to attack them and when you attack these molecules you're going to develop a disease and these diseases that could be different depending on the type of molecule you are attacking depending if it's more T or B cell predominant are called autoimmune diseases okay so this is my message to you here now I want to tell you a little bit about reactions to transplantation so when I call something an auto graft that means it's a transplant from a person to the same person let's say you get a piece of your skin on the leg and you need to you know feel some other part of the body or you get a piece of a tissue from um, your mouth and you need to fill up in your gums that would be an auto graft graft means the transplant tissue right? transplanted tissue if you have an allograft that's a transplantation from one person to, the, to another. Now remember we were talking about MHC, the major histocompatibility complex? These molecules are our Facebook, right? And they are on the surface of all our cells. The thing is, every tissue has MHC class 1, right? And immune cells have MHC class 2. So if you think about you having these molecules in all your cells, I want you to imagine, which is true, that your MHC1 molecules are not going to have the same sequence as your sister, for example. They could be similar, but they could be different. Your MHC molecules are probably very different from my MHC molecules because we're not related. We're not from the same mother and father, right? That means MHC molecules vary. And in humans, varies, right? They vary. And in humans, we call these molecules HLA. HLA is um, an acronym for human leukocyte antigen which is the same as MHC class 1. It's just a different nomenclature. If HLA is identical between two people, they can transplant any organ to whatever donor. Okay. If HLA is different, then there are other risks involved. And then you say, well, but I heard that cornea, for example, is okay if you transplant cornea and nothing is going to happen to that um, to that recipient. That's true because we have, and I'm going to write here, organs that are we call of immune privilege. In these cases, they do not they do not have lymphatic vessels which means B cells and T cells are not going to get to these organs. Which organs are we talking about? We're talking about heart, cornea, uterus of a pregnant woman, brain and testes. These are the main ones. Okay, So these organs can be transplanted except for the uterus uh, which, you know, it's just inside the uterus when the woman is pregnant, then there is not an attack to the baby because it becomes an immune privilege site. But the other organs have a better ability to uh, not suffer rejection if they are transplanted because they don't have B and T cells around. Okay, if you're not talking about organs that have immune privilege, then you're talking about, for example, bone marrow. Bone marrow is where your leukocytes are formed, right? All your blood cells are formed in your bone marrow. That means transplanting bone marrow is a big deal. So if you have identical 
HLA, you may hopefully be okay if the HLA is identical between you and your donor. It's really hard to find these donors that have identical HLA, but when it happens, that would be really lucky for the patient that needs a bone marrow transplantation. And then, if you don't have non-identical HLA, you can have what is called host graft graft versus host disease or J V A D. What is that? The bone marrow I'm gonna write here. This is the bone marrow of the donor. And this is the recipient. Okay? So the recipient receives this bone marrow from the donor and the bone marrow cells so here you have B and T cells, right? Start to attack organs of your recipient. And that causes this disease. Usually affects skin, causing rashes that can form even blisters, jaundice, affecting the liver, and affects the gastrointestinal tract, causing nausea, vomit, diarrhea, and these can really get serious. Usually you have 50% of the cases of allotransplantation causing bone marrow rejection and graft, graft versus host disease if the HLA is not identical. Okay, So this, is, um, this can cause really serious consequences and even death. This is what I, I needed you to know about transplantation. So in the next video we're going to talk about AIDS. Bye-bye.